Alright guys, welcome back to the GSL Super Tournament here in Seoul, Korea, this lovely studio. You can get a little bit of a view of it. If you look behind me, you can see the little, little screen over there. Um, it's another place you can watch the games. Obviously there's the big screen and you sit like the crowd gets too much, you like, kind of look to the side. It's an awesome studio. Definitely recommend coming down. If you're in Seoul, like I said, why haven't you come here yet? I know a lot of people watching have come here and have a good time. You come here, you meet a lot of foreigners. A lot of foreigners come and watch the broadcast. There's always at least one, and oftentimes there are more foreigners than Koreans for certain broadcasts. Now, today we have a special treat for you guys. It's OGS Nada. He's been dubbed the Renaissance Nerd. He is a really, really top-level Terran. He was a top-level Terran in StarCraft 1, obviously, in StarCraft 2. Did, did quite well um, as well. We're going to take a look at our players here already. Now his opponent is Startail Virus, who's got, I like that hairstyle, it looks pretty awesome. It just looks so uh, modern, it's a pretty cool haircut there. But uh, Startail Virus, he's done fairly well, he's kind of had some spotty success, but recently making it to Code S and then making it all the way to the round 16, that's pretty impressive. Um, his results before that weren't as impressive, but uh, there's a shot of him now. He's uh, looking down, preparing himself. His, uh, <laughs> he's got those headphones on it almost looks like he's got the glasses that like your grandpa might wear in case they fall they don't fall all the way down or you can just kind of let them hang there um that's what it looked like with his headphones there but uh yeah he's got his work cut out for him playing against nada and his win rate versus terran is actually better than nada's win rate versus terran but nada's played against more top terrans than he has so that's a little um it's not really telling of real win rate versus terran now we're gonna get a shot of a picture of Nada himself. There he is. He is ranked seventh in the GSL. That's actually really, to be in the top eight in GSL ranking means you have done a lot in the GSL. And that is one thing that Nada has done. Well, <laughs> that's one thing. That one thing is a lot of things. Look at his results. He's always making it far in Code S. And even making it, you know, it's like his worst result up there is his world championship round 16, which was no easy feat either. He's meditating, he's preparing. Anata's so good he can play with his eyes closed. Check out that new OGS shirt, I like that. It's uh, It's got a nice blue touch to it. I think it really fits the OGS theme. Now OGS, for those of you guys who didn't know, and its creation was actually just a team of old StarCraft 1 players. That's why it's called Old Generations. That's what it stands for, so... It's a pretty cool team. Of course, they've since taken in newer players, but... Not a, one of the first players to join OGS, and it was a huge deal when he did. I don't know if you guys remember the uh, the time when Nada, you know, didn't really. He still had his Kespa contract, and he wanted to play that show match against TLO, and that didn't quite work out. I know some of you guys remember that; it was pretty funny. Um, Nada just—it's a huge deal whenever he did anything in StarCraft 2. And finally, he joined OGS, so big pickup for OGS. So if you look at Virus's recent wins against Terran, he's you know only played two recent games, and that's 100% wins, of course. And uh, you know that's that's pretty good. Beating your opponent all you know, all the time recently. I mean, so you know, you pretty much understand the matchup pretty well. But you're playing against Nada, who, even though his win rate is less than 100%, you see he's played a lot more games, and a lot of the players he's played uh, he's played against have much better opponents than the players that uh, that virus is taking. I mean, he took out Ensnare. Ensnare's uh, he's pretty good, but he's not that good. I think recently he's kind of fallen. Ensnare is one of those players I think he's fallen really far. He and Rainbow both are uh, players I thought who were the best Terrans out there are now just slumped like crazy. Alright, so we're going to take a look at our maps. They are going to be Metalopolis for set 1. Set 2 will be on Terminus Re, and set 3 will be on Selnai Caverns. Crossfire, a map eliminated by Virus. And Nada eliminating Belcher Beach. Nada's style is very... He wants to play a long game, wants to play a macro game. He's not a very aggressive player normally. He just likes to sit back and just overrun his opponent eventually once he starts getting close to maxed. Because of his StarCraft 1 experience, his macro is incredible. So we'll see, though, how this game fares. The map is loading. The first map will be Metalopolis. Like I said, who's going to take Game 1? Will it be Startail Virus or will it be OGS Nada? Two Terrans battling it out here at the GSL Super Tournament.
Starfield Virus vs. Ojis Nada. All right, over here in the red, a member of the team, Startail, you might want to get vaccinated or else he might give you a... <laughs> Startail virus. It's infecting everyone with the Startail virus. Got to get vaccinated when you're here or else he's going to get you. His opponent, who is going gas first, a member of the team OGS, one of the older players. OGS Nada. OGS Nada. And actually, normally when Nada plays, the crowd is full of uh, women, of attractive women, in fact, so just throughout the crowd normally. But today, there aren't as many girls as usual. It's about, I'm looking over, just maybe about four or five. Usually it's filled with girls. The sign. <laughs> Where is OGS Nada's game at Mokdong Studio? It's like, where's his game? It's here. Mukdong Studio. Now, I want to thank our sponsors, LG, Cinema 3D, Intel, and G-Scale. Without them, this tournament would not be possible. Now, Virus actually is not taking any gas at all. Now, against certain types of build orders, that can just straight up lose you the game. Even if you get a fast command center, you just can't have enough Marines out if your opponent goes Banshees. You still have that Viking out, he has Cloak, and even if you have scans, the Banshee just runs away from your Marines forever and you just die. That can happen sometimes. Since Nada did go gas first, it's likely that he has something planned. He's getting his factory before Orbital Command. That was the fastest factory possible. That was a quick factory indeed. I actually want to know what timing he got his gas now. So that was a it's hard to have enough gas for that, even if you go for a refinery first. To watch this replay tomorrow or something when I'm in the studio before the matches start. Don't you guys wish you could watch these replays? Ha ha ha, I can watch them. Now, Nada's finishing up his second depot here. Look at that timing. He actually was able to make a Marine and an SCV right before that depot finished. So, so cutting it close. He's going to make a starport immediately, most likely. And Nada tried to scout his opponent. He knows where he is. He saw three Marines, but he doesn't really know exactly what that means. If you see three Marines instead of two, it's a pretty good sign that your opponent is... He's, it basically means he either did a normal tech build or he is going for an early expansion because otherwise if he had gone for, um, you know, if he had gone for gas first, he would have also only had two Marines because if you go gas first, you kind of have to cut that one Marine, get a little bit behind. So basically not as like, well, at the very least, I know I'm ahead in tech. I don't know exactly what my opponent's doing. But I'm about to find out with my first Banshee. And there he goes, switching it up here. Now, Nada doesn't have enough energy for Cloak yet. But that's okay. Or rather, Gas. And it looks like he actually just wants to... He hasn't even taken the second Gas yet, so it looks like he just wants to put a little bit of pressure on this Banshee, do a little bit of harassment. And if you have good micro... Oh, Nada scans. He sees everything. And now he knows, oh man, you're just not even going to have a Starport at all. And that might actually make him want to research Cloak ASAP. Because if your opponent doesn't have a starport and you have cloak, it's almost impossible to kill those banshees. Now, he is making a command center, so he wants to expand behind this banshee. But like I've said several times in, in all of my casts, you guys have watched me, and as other casters have said, or as pro gamers have told you, as you guys have learned from since you were a noob at StarCraft II, banshees can pretty much kill Infinity Marines if controlled properly. If you guys watched the game with Maka yesterday versus SC, banshees, they can just kill so many Marines. Nada's doing the switch we're going to start tank production. So he's actually just going to make this one Banshee. But when your opponent doesn't have stim and doesn't have a lot of Marines, that one Banshee may be all you need. All right, so that Banshee does take one hit. Got to be very careful. Wants to avoid missile turrets. He's going to attack whatever he can. He's going to attack SCVs. He's going to attack Marines. Look at that. Controls it really well. Virus, though, is going to flank from the other side. And uh, actually, not as Banshee Harass, not doing as much damage as I predicted it would. This virus having some really good control with his Marines. Stim is about to finish, and when it does, this Banshee will be shut down. It's already gotten four kills. He's injured a lot of Marines. So a lot of those kills are like half kills. Or, you know, he basically has like ten kills with all the half kills he's gotten added up. And actually, that wasn't Stim research. That was Combat Shield. So he got Combat Shields right off the bat, which is going to increase his Marines' longevity. 
but it's going to be much, much harder to deal with this Banshee that's still alive. Nada sends it back to repair and comes back and annoys him with it. Actually, back at home, I didn't have my production tab open. Now I have it open, and I see that Nada, he actually is not going into a Siege Tank transition. He's going into Blue Flame Hellions, which is great when your opponent goes straight up Marines. If you go Blue Flame Hellions and you control them properly, you can just kill so many Marines with that Blue Flame. But to start with, he's actually going to go right in here, and he's actually drawn the Marines away from where he's going to drop with his Banshee. Now he's going to drop these Hellions right in, going to go right for the Mineral Line, and Virus hasn't reacted yet, his Hellions are going to do so much damage because Virus lined up his SCVs. Look how many SCVs they are killing, they are killing a lot. One Hellion does fall, and Nada actually should be able to escape with these Hellions, but he doesn't even want to, he just wants to kill as many Marines as he can. I don't know where the dropship went off to, maybe he lost it. Oh, now he's actually avoiding the Marines. He's going to run into the natural and get some more kills there. Look at that. The SCV is lining up like crazy. Oh! That's the only noise to make when you watch SCVs die to pre-igniter Hellions. <laughs> it's the only noise to make. Nanada has started siege mode. He's got another Hellion back at home. May try to drop it a little bit later, do some more damage. Remember that Banshee's still alive as well. Right now, as far as worker counts go, we've got 33 SCVs to just 24 for Virus, so Nada taking a significant lead. Double reactors here, so he wants to continue with the Hellions. Pre-Igniter Hellions keep good map control, they're good for scouting. They always keep your opponent scared of drops because one Pre-Igniter Hellion drop can ruin your day, can ruin your night. No matter what you were doing that day, you get Pre-Igniter Hellion dropped, you lose all your SCVs, or at least some of them, it ruins whatever you were doing. It's your birthday, and Nada drops Pre-Igniter Hellions in your base, you're going to be pissed for the rest of the day. Alright, so Nada actually is going to relocate one of his barracks. It's a little bit strange. Going to move it down to the low ground. Maybe wants to reinforce his Marines faster. Nada actually, unlike Nada, is supply blocked and has four SCVs queued up on that command center. That was a little unusual. We caught you, Nada! You made a mistake and it was on TV and everybody saw. So a little bit of another drop here from Nadi. Did save that dropship. He's going to send the same one back in here. Do a drop. Now he can actually clean up these Marines very quickly with four Hellions. And these Marines were on hold position. So all the Marines are going to die for nothing. Well, that one Marine escapes. But look at all these SCVs lined up. Virus splitting at the last second. But does lose a ton of SCVs anyways. And it looks like Nada will lose every last Hellion. At least that looks to be the case. Virus is going to chase that Hellion all the way. Oh, they had a stalemate. Like, I won't shoot you if you don't shoot me. Now, notice that Virus um, is going to do a little drop here, which is pretty nice because normally when you do this kind of thing, you don't have that many units back at home, or at least they're at your front. So this drop could do a lot of damage. But it's spotted by Nada's Vikings. He has his Vikings there prepared for this. And now this drop is going to be cleaned up. Easy peasy. Nada squeezy. Not even going to get that Supply Depot. You know what he got with that drop? He got Nada, except he didn't, because Nada is fine. Now, Nada, two factory siege... No, I take that back. Four factories, three factory siege tanks cranking out here. He's got Pre-Igniter Hellions as well, and he's got so many Vikings that he's going to have the air advantage because his opponent didn't have a starport for so long. In fact, Virus... He just now is getting his first starport unit, and it's a Banshee. And when your opponent has that many Banshees, I tell you what. I mean, excuse me, when your opponent has that many Vikings, I tell you what the last unit you want is in your army is Banshees. Especially if you don't have Cloak, and he's not going to have Cloak. That Banshee will be futile. He's going to try to use it. Look at the split by Virus. Well, you'll get a shot of it in a second. He split his units very well. But I don't think he can deal with this attack by Nada. Nada is 40 supply ahead. 115 supply to 77, and Virus actually sending some of his units out here. Looks like Nada, instead of attacking the natural, is just going to go ahead and use that air superiority to start attacking over here at the edge, but smartly, Virus has positioned his barracks far away from that ledge. He does lose the reactor. Keep in mind, though, Virus doesn't even have enough units to really hold Nada's attack because Nada did so much damage. So he's going to lose this barracks. Well, you know, if you lift a barracks, try to keep it alive and Nada has like eight Vikings on top of it, it's not going to work out for you. So that one Banshee for Virus does kind of escape, avoids the Vikings, so you may be able to do a little bit of harassment. Notice on your mini-map though, Nada has taken a third base, He's getting it up and saturated, dropping missile turrets. 
keeping that tank contained up a little bit, keeping his opponent away. It's not a smell something's up because he's actually sending all of his forces home. It's just one Banshee though. But Nana wants to be prepared to crush that Banshee. Banshee has about half of its cloak research done. There's a second Banshee out there somewhere as well. Nana just trying to find and shut those down. Now, smartly, Virus is going to try to take a third command center, but I don't think he's going to be able to hold it if Nada spots it. Look at those units. Obviously, a lot of them really low on health. Goodbye, Banshee. Nada is everywhere. He's got so many Vikings. He actually stopped making Vikings for a little while because he realized, he's like, well, I have air superiority so bad that <laughs> making Vikings at this point is pretty much just useless. It's like I could kill your Banshee with five or six Vikings or kill him with ten. I think I'll just stick with the six and make more siege tanks. Right now, Nada has 13 Siege Tanks to 2 Siege Tanks of Virus. Nada's going to Siege up here, but one Banshee cloaks and tries to target down Siege Tanks, but there's just not enough DPS on that Banshee. Everything getting cleaned up here for Virus. Nada losing a lot of Siege Tanks, not attacking cost efficiently, but it doesn't matter. He's just Sieged up on top of his opponent's Siege Tanks because he knows he has a much better army and he can get away with it. Nada just making more Hellions, Vikings, and Siege Tanks. He can see everything with his, his Vikings, but his opponent just can't deal with those Vikings. He doesn't have any Marines. If he did, they would get mowed down by the Siege Tanks. Now, one thing that Virus has going for him is that Nada hasn't seen that base yet, but he's going to see any SCV transfers that may occur, and he's got Hellions over here. If there are any SCVs transferred to that base, he'll find them, and he'll kill them. It looks like Nada's going to push forward again, sieging up using his superior vision, but actually, this time, I'm not sure if it was the best choice. He's going to lose all of these Siege Tanks, most likely. Nope, I take it back. He had a scan. Now he's actually just going to drop Vikings on top of his opponent's siege tanks because he can. Because he's Nada. And Virus playing a good game here, but just did not deal with the Pre-Igniter Hellion Harass as well as he could have. And for that reason, Nada was able to pull ahead like crazy. Not even going to drop a mule here to repair his siege tanks. There he goes, using it. And there, there's no real units there at the, the top base. And Nada's taking the entire map. He's got the gold base. He's got his entire map, or his entire side of the map, completely covered. He hasn't scouted the base of Virus, but there's nothing there to see. GG! There he is, man. Nada showing us how to do pre igniter drops. Now, I wonder if... What I was kind of thinking when the game started out was, okay, Virus may be trying to go for a fast commander because he knows that Nada kind of plays a passive macro style, so maybe I'll try to get ahead of him just by playing it risky. Because I don't know Virus' style that, often, that, that well. I don't see him play that often. And so when I saw him do that, I thought maybe that was his plan. But it actually may be the case that Virus likes to play passively as well, and so Nada went for that gas first. Gas first is definitely part of Nada's plan. It wasn't kind of a split decision thing to go for Hellions. It was entirely planned in TBT there are a lot of builds you can do like cloak banshees and hellions um that they're just so safe to do if you know how to do them that you can do them every game no matter what your opponent's doing and sometimes it works out better if your opponent plays it risky so our next map is going to be terminus re these two players are gonna battle it out again nada looking so strong in that game virus looking not he didn't look very weak he tried to play an unusual style he got a lot of bio tried to expand early but it, you know, he just didn't defend those Hellions as well as he could have, and if he had defended those, he might have been in a better spot. But the countdown has started. Will Nada close this one out 2-0, or will Startail Virus try to get back in it and maybe take him out, take a game off Nada? Can he do it? Let's find out here at the GSL Super Tournament. Right now. Any second now, I'm in the game. Just waiting. Here we go. Right now they're doing a long little shot of these guys look at them take a good look at these guys because for some reason we're taking a long look all right here we go <laughs> starting the game now <laughs> 